All right, I'll call the meeting to order. Let the roll call show all board members in attendance. And item two, Pledge of Allegiance. The flag is right at the back of the room. If you can all stand and say the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item three, our mission statement. The Barocco Area School District provides a quality education for all students that inspires continuous learning, positive relationships, curiosity, and compassion in an environment that welcomes diversity while developing respectful and responsible citizens. So item four, we have election of officers. And because Mrs. Lawrence is remote tonight, um, I'm presiding over the meeting. So we do have uh, the board will be electing a president, vice president, clerk, and treasurer. We typically would have the past president running the meeting until the election of a new president. I'll be running the meeting since Angie is remote. When the election of a new president is completed, the individual elected president will run the remainder of the meeting. All nominations require a second. Each board member can make no more than one nomination or one second for each position. If a board member's nomination does not receive a second, that board member may make another nomination or second. So our first election is for president. Um, I, nom I nominate Angie Lawrence as president. Is there a second? I will second. I would second that. Oh, thanks, Marina. Are there any other nominations? I move to close nominations and elect Angie Lawrence as president of the Roca School Board. And is there a second for that nomination? Second. All right, we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Marina? Aye. Does Angie vote? Um, no. I'm next, next and I will vote aye. She will abstain. Angie abstains. I abstain. Kim? Aye. Robert? Aye. Matt? Aye. Oh, sorry, Amanda. I got out of order. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So I need to verify the elected individual accepts the position. Angie, um, I Lawrence? do with I do with thanks from the uh, board for supporting me in that position. Thank you. Thank you for accepting that position, Angie. So I will continue to preside over the meeting since Angie is remote. Um, is there a nomination for vice president? I'll nominate Vicki as vice president of the Viroqua School Board. And I'll second that nomination. Are there any other nominations? I move to close the nominations and elect Vicki Kappa as vice president of the Viroqua School Board. Second. Thank you, Kim. All right, we will take a voice vote. Marina? Aye. I abstain. Angie? Aye. Kim? Aye. Robert? Aye. Amanda? Aye. And Matt? Aye. Okay, and I... You accept? Do I accept the position? Yes, I accept the position. Thank you very much. Uh, clerk. Do we have a nomination for a clerk? Um, I'll nominate Robert Nye as clerk for the Roca School Board. Second. Are there any other nominations? I move to close the nominations and elect Robert Nye as the clerk of the Roca School Board. Is there a second for that nomination? Second. 
Thank you. Yes. Okay, so we will have a voice vote. Marina? Aye. I vote aye. Angie? Aye. Kim? Aye. Robert? Abstain. Amanda? Aye. And Matt? Aye. Thank you. And Robert, do you accept the position? I accept. Thank you very much. And Treasurer? I nominate Amanda as treasurer of the Baroque School Board. You I'll second that. All right. Are there any other nominations? Motion to close nomination with a little call vote. Thank you. And Marina? Aye. I vote aye. Angie? Aye. And Kim? Aye. Robert? Aye. Amanda? Abstain. And Matt? Aye. All right, Amanda, do you accept the position? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, moving on, number five, WASB delegate to state convention and alternate delegate. <laughs> So the person selected as the WASB delegate attends the delegate assembly meeting at the WASB State Education Convention in January 2023. The person's responsibility is to represent our board while voting on resolutions brought before the assembly. An alternate delegate also needs to be appointed. The 2021-22 WASB delegate was Matt Tubin, alternate Kim Little. WASB convention this coming year will be January 18th through the 20th. I nominate Matt Tubin as the delegate delegate for 20, uh, 2023 and Kim Little as the alternate delegate to the WASB convention. Second. We do a voice vote on this one. Uh -huh. Uh, let's do a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So Matt and Kim, do you accept the position? Yes. Yep. Thank you. And looks like we have one more. For item six, CESA 4 ref to the annual meeting. A member of our board needs to be appointed to attend the CESA 4 annual convention on Wednesday, June 1st, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Our 2021 CESA 4 rep was Matt. Um, I have a question. I'm wondering if there is someone that cannot accept that date before there is a nomination. Because we can't reappoint I, uh, anyone. Oh. I, I intend to go to the retiree at banquet at the VFW that night. Thank you. I was wondering if there was anyone else that knows that they, because once a person is nominated to the position, uh, we can't change it. That's why I was wondering, I believe. Correct. Is there anyone else that cannot attend that date? I think we have a board meeting, right? But June 1st, right? Or Wednesday? We're not doing the first Wednesday. Um, That's what I have on my calendar. That's the VA retirement, so on. Um, <laughs> Okay, yeah, I, that's, but you're right. The only thing I right. on my calendar was yes. Yes. You're that, right. so I just want to make sure I was. Matt? I'm okay. As of now. Motion? Ready for a motion? We're ready for a motion. Okay, I nominate Matt Tubin as a CEASA representative to the Board of Control's annual meeting on June 1, 2022. So. I'll second that. All right. Um, all in favor? Vote by saying aye. 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 
Opposed? Matt, do you accept the position? I do. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. All right, number seven, budget hearing annual meeting date. Uh, the past few years, the budget hearing annual meeting has been held before the regular September meeting. The regular September board meeting falls on Monday, September 19, 2022. I move to approve the budget hearing annual meeting to be held on September 19, 2022. Second. All right. Do we have school that day? Just making sure. I know at one time I was talking about having the Monday after the fair off or something. Maybe. Wasn't there something like that? Just want to make sure. I don't have that. It's a day off. Okay. Just, uh, just don't I do know we talked about it, but I think that was one that had to go back in. Okay. I just didn't remember what the final calendar looked like. And so I just wanted to make sure. That we are you you calling it up? Yeah. I knew that one had it off at one point. So. Mm -hmm. Definitely did. No, just the Friday of care. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for clarifying that. Um, all in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 Opposed. All right, motion passes. Committee appointments. All right, we have board members appointed to the following committees, budget and finance, Amanda running chair, Marina Apt and Angie Lawrence members, curriculum, Vicki Kappa chair, Marina Apt, Angie Lawrence members, policy, Matt Tubin chair, Kim Little, Robert Nye members, compensation, Kim Little chair, Amanda Running, Vicki Kappa members, building, Buildings and Grounds, Robert Nye, Chair, Angie Lawrence, Matt Tubin, members. I move to recommend the board. Committee. I'll make a motion to approve the board committee appointments as recommended. It's Angie. Second. All right, any discussion? All in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Should we all abstain? <laughs> <laughs> we have to vote. <laughs> Motion passes. All right, moving on, item nine, committee reports, compensation chair Kim and curriculum chair myself. Kim, do you want to talk about compensation? I'm in the middle of a coughing attack. Could someone else do it? <laughs> Can I do it, Vicki? Do both of them? Uh, let's see. Why don't you do compensation? I'll do curriculum. I've got to. Okay. Um, we had a discussion um, about the employee educational support program um, to just have the administration move forward with exploring options. Um, Amanda, do you mind um, explaining what that is for those watching that might not understand what that terminology is, please? Mike, do you want to elaborate on things or do you want me to, I don't know what you want to. Yeah, no, I mean, it was, uh, as, as a committee report, Amanda, why don't you just go ahead and do it? But I okay. don't think there was anything we discussed. That. Right, so um, just about being able to have, um, if there is staff members that are wanting to explore, um, you know, being a paraprofessional onto teaching or teaching into administration, that there's opportunities for the district to support them in their future endeavors. Um, really not much was more was discussed other than um, having the administration look at um, what potential there is 
for that in our district as we move forward. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry if that caught you off guard, but I just thought maybe some people didn't know what that term was. So thank you. More information to come later. Yes, yeah. The administration, oh, the conversation was, yes, explore. Mm -hmm. so. Any other questions about that committee? Um, curriculum, we had a very short meeting. We reviewed Spanish by Ed and English language arts. Did not have many comments or corrections. The documents were all very well done. Much thanks to Krista and the committees and the faculty who worked on that. Um, we'll have a reading. So if people do have questions, you can send those questions to Tom. And that was all we discussed, just those three areas. So any questions on the curriculum committee? How is the outcome of our Spanish curriculum for students going into college? Have any feedback from those students as to how well prepared they are? We didn't, yeah, we didn't discuss that. I don't know if, I don't know that that's ever, that that's been explored before. That would be, that would be interesting information to know. Yeah, I think um, I think we can definitely take note of that and um, potentially make that part of a either future data workshop, Robert, or um, potential profile of a graduate, something along those lines. Hope you're feeling better, Tom. I'm a little under the weather. Uh, well, come on, I sound perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so we have discussed um, doing surveys after students graduate at different times. We haven't come up with what that would look like, but we've talked about having um, some type of a, a board workshop and how we might go forward with that. I know most of the board members are interested in seeing how students are prepared, no matter what topic it is. So hopefully we can have some further discussion about that later on. Sounds good. Any other comments, questions? All right, we'll move on to item 10, consent agenda. So I will read all of um, the information that is in our consent agenda for tonight. Item A, approval of agenda. Item B, proof of public notice. Item C, the March meeting minutes. Item D, voucher summary one in the amount of $296,224.74. Resignations, we have none. Retirements, we have Brad Thu, high school, middle school band, 25 years. Larry Colden, special education teacher, one year. Uh, Terry Olson, buildings and grounds supervisor, 35 years. Appointments, Jessica Kress, speech and language pathologist for the year 22-23, 2022 summer school handbook, 2022 summer school contracts and summer school teaching assignments. Just a clarification, and, yeah. um, Jessica Kress is starting with the year 2023, not only. Oh. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, I move to approve the consent agenda as presented. I'll second that. And I'd like to indicate what we have 61 years of experience in three positions. Yeah. One of those only has one year. And he was actually a, a, a Educational assistant, special education para for a couple of years before that. Yeah. Kathy? Five or six. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're up to 65, 66 years. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks to those people for their, their service and best wishes in their retirement. So I'm sorry, did we have a second? We had a second from Robert. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all in favor, vote by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on, item 11, student board report. So we have Maddie Porter and Cami Lear in attendance tonight. Thank you for attending. And what, what do you have to share with us? <laughs> okay, get your steps down. <laughs> Okay. We don't like too hard. <laughs> I'm gonna do this first. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> My name is Maddie Porter. Um, I graduated this January, and then this June I'll be attending Western Technical College to do their dental assistant program. And then after that, I'm going to continue on into dental hygiene. Uh, I'm Cami Lear. Um, I plan on going to Luther College in Decorah, pursuing a law de a law degree. Uh, but majoring in history. <laughs> and so this past Saturday, we had our prom. Um, over 300 kids participated in the dance and about 150 of those stuck around for post-prom afterwards. Um, it was held at the fairgrounds this year, which was a really nice facility that we got to use. Um, the dance was really nice. A lot of the kids were having fun dancing, and the post prom was just as fun with all the games that we had. So it was a really enjoy, enjoyable event. And we're very happy for all the support and everything we got from the parents and the community to let us have it there. And then um, on Wednesday, we are having the large group festival in Westby for our band, choir, and orchestra students. And then on Saturday, we have the state solo ensemble event for I think nearly fifty kids. No, that's twenty-five. A lot of kids. <laughs> <laughs> there will be a lot of kids attending with that event on Saturday. So wish them luck. Um, coming up soon, we have our honors program on May fourth. For seniors, we'll get to find out what scholarships they get, and those will be announced. And then on May second, advanced placement of the AP testing begins. <laughs> oh yeah so the classes that they took the ap ones the advanced placement will get them college credits um you know we have quite a few right yeah so there'll be a lot of testing going on that day well those days to get spread out it's usually the week of may 2nd yeah mm -hmm. all so right have, yeah all right thank you thank you any questions why did you choose your well, choices of careers? Dental assistant and attorney at law? I picked mine just because I wanted something where I could, that's reliable. They need them almost everywhere you go. So I really picked something, like after COVID, I got really influenced by the fact that some people could lose their jobs. So I really wanted something where I knew it was very secure. And then I'd have a lot of time for things outside of work and after like weekends and such. Okay. Uh, uh, I chose law mostly because I've always been really into like women's rights and helping people and getting people like letting them have a voice, even if they think they don't have one or like giving them the opportunity to like speak out against certain people or like things that have happened to them. So that's something I've always been really passionate about. And I'm told I'm very good at arguing. So, <laughs> I don't know, I Is that a genetic thing? I think so. <laughs> um, but no, I just I'm really I'm really hoping to look, or really hoping to help a lot of people in the future. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a vendor in, in the ratings. I'm wondering if either of you went on the band trip and if you could share any of those experiences. Yeah, I, I went on the trip. Um, it was it was definitely an experience. Um, well, being gone for a week was very, very interesting. Um, going to D.C. was very um, it was very new. Yeah, it was new to see all the history and everything that you would normally just learn on like a textbook or like in a, on a computer. But actually seeing it in real life and seeing all of the artifacts and everything at the Smithsonian, everything was that was really fun to see and really, uh, it's hard to put into words how, how amazing it was. And then New York was 
oh, it was a lot bigger than I thought it was. Like it doesn't <laughs> like it doesn't make sense to say that because it's a very yes. large city, but it was it was so eye opening seeing all of, like the skyscrapers and everything and going on top of the Empire State Building and seeing the whole city at night was probably is one of my favorite memories from that trip. It's something I'll always remember, I think. And it was just, it was very tiring and it was a lot of work, but I'm so thankful that we got to go on this trip. It, it really was a trip of a lifetime for all of us. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Did you all by chance I attend? I love my chaperones. My chaperones were great. <laughs> did, did you by chance attend any of the the museums i know you said the smithsonian's but which which ones did you attend um as many as we could um we, all of them are on the national mall. yeah yeah all of them around the national mall that we could get to so um there's the future museum about um all the potential upcoming new technology that we are developing. Um, there was the American Indian Museum. I remember I visited that one. Um, there was the Natural History Museum with all the artifacts of animals and everything. There was the, there was the African American. Um, there was another museum. There's so many, it's hard to like name them all, but there was a lot. Oh, we visited a good many of them. I think we spent two days. Yeah, parts of two, yeah, days. two, yeah, parts of two days exploring all of the different museums that they had around the National Mall. Can you share anything about New York and the um, plays that you attended? Um, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, oh, so. Okay, the two two plays that we went to see were The Lion King and Wicked. And um, I've always wanted to see Wicked. I'd never seen it before. I've only seen like parts and like parts of songs, but I'd never seen an actual Broadway show before. And it, it's high budget. <laughs> it's very um, it's very interesting to watch one and see all like the characters come to life and compared to like your small town, like um, community theater and how much it can grow from that on a Broadway stage and seeing all the actors. And when they talk to you afterwards, how you can tell that they really enjoy what they're doing and, and the careers that they've chosen. It's, it's very inspiring to watch them act. And then other parts of New York was just busy. <laughs> it was constant hustle and bustle and compared to normal, just rural life, where everything's kind of calmer and you don't see that much traffic. It was, it was slow, but very, very chaotic. Chaotic is like a very rough word, but it's, it's a good way to explain New York, just of how fast paced everything is. Have you ever heard of the word? Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was just saying, uh, I did look for you on the Today Show, but unfortunately, oh. I didn't see anyone. Oh, I think they're all the way in the back. No. I think so. And it's a little bit different than a, even having gone there like four or five years ago. Security is very different from the Today mm. Show. They're not outside as much um, compared to they used to come on post from outside. Mm -hmm. I've seen them a lot more times. So we were there, though. <laughs> and like Mr. Cross was there, they had up the spirit. There's a word and it's called tumult. There's a lot of tumult there. There's a lot of things going on all over the place. Um, I believe this is your last meeting. Is that true? Yes, I think so, yeah. Okay. So we, we would all like to thank you and your uh, senior you're the senior students that decided that they would like to participate with the board. We hope that you got as much out of it as we did having you here. And we wish you only the best in your future. And if you ever have any questions or any anything that we can be of assistance for you in any capacity, we, are, we as a board and school district would do anything to support you and your, your goals in the future. So thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>
um, middle school leadership lab. So we have Jenny, Nicole, and Krista. Hello. <laughs> not allowed. Not allowed. <laughs> so uh, I'm Krista, and this is Nicole Light and Jenny Schultz, and we are here representing the Middle School Leadership Lab. You have probably heard a little bit about this team this year. We just wanted to share a little bit about ourselves, our history, and what we have done and what we plan to continue into the future. So just a little background about Leadership Lab. Um, it is a, a, an opportunity for adult learners sponsored by CESA 4. They've historically had something like this for leadership for many years. I don't know how many years they have. Um, and this year's version is called Leadership Lab. It's through their school and school improvement services group there at CESA 4. Um, team, teams of school and building leaders from all the different CESA schools in our, in our area um, attended, facilitated by CESA leaders and a gentleman named Joe Kudemi, who is a specialist from Solution Tree, uh, a pretty well-known organization that has educational leadership trainers or leaders <coughs> of leaders. Uh, we have been following, they provided us and we've been following two resources throughout, uh, called one called Taking Action and one called Learning by Doing. So we're all the groups, all the members throughout the CESA are, are doing some reading on the side and then collaborating around these resources throughout our meetings. Um, here at Barocco Middle School, we had a team of eight. Um, Mr. Schneider and I were on it along with interventionists and classroom teachers. Um, we had virtual meetings that we attended in October, December, February, and one, our final one tomorrow. The learning goals that um, that these four meetings were, we were supposed to and will be accomplishing. Um, initially, we are supposed to address our current reality, what's happening in our school in terms of policy, procedures, practices, and adult mindset. We were to determine a greatest area of need in our building, what we wanted to work on, a goal we wanted to accomplish or move towards. We were to create a compelling case for a change that is needed within our building. We, we were to learn some different ways to reach consensus um, among our group and ways to lead reaching consensus with other teams within our schools. We were to create an actual plan and focus on the change that needs to happen with adults um, that eventually through adult change also leads to changes and, and different student outcomes. So after that first meeting, our group, one of our first decisions that we made was we wanted to kind of make our own name other than Leadership Lab. So just through our discussions, um, a few different attempts, we decided to <laughs> call ourselves the CoLab because as you'll learn in just a minute, one of our primary folks is focuses is collaboration. So combining the word collaboration with the original leadership <laughs> lab gave us the name CoLab. So now we're the CoLab team. <laughs> so, um, so far, our progress so far is our goal is to guide practices around collaboration and communication in the building with special focus on the collaboration and communication among vertical teams. So like the math department, the ELA department, the history department, science, things like that. So we can talk more vertically like five, eight, um, and things like that. Um, our team hopes to develop a framework for professional learning communities, also known as PLCs, that include topics, focus questions, and norms for collaboration. Um, so every time we've discussed our greatest area of needs, every time as we've gone through this, it kept coming back to, because the whole thing is collaboration vertical teams. Well, our, we kept coming back to, well, there's no time in our day to ever do it. And one of the things was, is like, you know, like special ed, they, you know, they work with math, they work with ELA, they work with so many different um, things that it was like, okay, when do we find the time besides just after school? Because after school sometimes just don't, doesn't seem enough. So it came back to really scheduling. Um, we, we kept circling around and circling around. And so um, as a team, um, we decided to tackle what our middle school schedule was going to look like next year and how we can kind of put it. Um, we took input from from all of our staff that attended. Um, what did they what did they like about schedules they've seen in the past? What 
what would they like to see differently and trying to meet as many needs as possible while still making the schedule work. Um, and so we gathered needs and wants. We tried to put it together. Um, we had a trial and then I think we thought we had something good, but then did end up being um, the, the trial schedule didn't end up sitting as well with some of our staff members as we thought it would. Um, so back to the draw, you know, after taking the input, we went back to the drawing board and then, you know, re like rethought, um, tried to compromise on, you know, taking advice from what the staff members were saying um, what they didn't like, what they did like, and things. And we eventually did um, come back to the staff and asked um, if, you know, how do you like the schedule and things like that came up pros, cons, you know, can you live with the schedule? Can you not? So um, some of the great things about our schedule is um, I know we wanted interventions for all grade levels to be at different times so we can maximize our interventionists. And the other great thing is all students will now have a resource. Um, because that was one thing is students felt like they had, a, especially at the seventh and eighth grade level, felt like they had to choose between a music and a resource. And so we added in a resource um, at different times for all grade levels. Um, so they will have that now. Um, and then now that we have consensus with the schedule, our collab team is currently leading the staff to develop plans for hop time. So we renamed our intervention time hop time because I want to think intervention has a bad connotation and then we don't all have you know it's it's meeting all needs not just the low not just the high so we remained it hot time <laughs> and then looking ahead so what we're planning on doing as we continue collab because it was a new thing we started but something we really want to grow is we've talked a lot about other concerns that the staff has had about just different aspects of school life and being faculty at the school and a lot of areas we talked about the student study skills, organization, and expectations. We found that my expectations for seventh grade were different than what was for fifth grade, different than what was for eighth grade. And we want to find unity. And a lot of that problem was not being able to have the collaboration that we need to find that structure. So as we move forward, we want to have those discussions and start, I guess, working from the ground up and creating a unified faculty. <laughs> so I, well, I guess to, to summarize, what, <laughs> what started out from um, just basically from scratch, we're learning that with the uh, adults on staff, we're learning that we can solve problems together and just the power of collaboration. Um, if we have the opportunity to do it and we have some kind of guiding principles or a framework in which to do it. It's really kind of powerful to see the, the learning and the change and just understanding better of each other through, through collaboration. So we're looking forward to what next year will bring. Thank you for your time. So what um, are some of the roadblocks that we talked about some common time? Uh, if there's some needs that you have um, financially or some other or release time or something that you might need for this? I think we were trying to do it with without needing release time. And so the schedule that we have drafted for next year allows has some times during the day where, where perhaps once a month, um, a team could support each other by covering a resource to allow certain teachers to be able to collaborate with their vertical team. Um, so the goal was to be able to do that within the actual school day, just by using some of our staff members flexibly in those times that are not as um, content focused like our resource time in particular. And it's, it's nice too, because um, the way it is, is in typically it's everybody meets at once, but um, the way we're talking about doing it this year is more like because of, especially because of special ed and special ed, the big complaint is always they have so many meetings to go to because they cover so many topics and subjects. It Math meets at, at a time and the rest are covering the classes. ELA meets, the rest of us are picking up the slack and covering and stuff. So it's not uh, everyone's having a meeting all at once. It's certain groups are having meetings. So what, do you have metrics for what success looks like? We do, we, <laughs> we do not have those defined, but I, I feel like our group, our adult group, 
should focus on what success looks like among ourselves, yes. apply that to ourselves. And, and also I think it would be fair to <coughs> set some of those before next school year begins. Like what do we want to see from this intervention time? What do we want to see from our opportunities for collaboration? What would, yeah, what would that look like? The books, I think the one book is, the one book focuses on RTI so more of what that hot time intervention time is going to look in the other book is very much what should a PLC really look like? Because um, they really do throw out the term PLC a lot. And then it's it's really nice to have that clear definition of this is what you should be talking about in those meetings. And it really provides a, a, a nice way of looking at it in a very clear defined way of, hey, this is what you really should be talking about. Mm -hmm. Other questions? No, I just, I, I think uh, John and Krista for um, jumping on board with this. And, and one thing that's really interesting with this, this type of a team is they are part of the team, but they are not necessarily um, leading this team. And there it's a, it's a group of leaders. And again, giving some of the, um, uh, not only decision-making power, but also just the, the ability to identify and help us identify issues that is not a top-down approach. So the group identified the issues they wanted to tackle this year, and then the group uh, worked together, identifying their own strengths as a team and continued you know, moving forward to create po uh, positive solutions for that. And so that's what's really exciting is the process it is, is just as exciting as the outcome, which is, is still pretty exciting. Thank you. Thank you so Thank you. much. Item 13, welcome visitors, public comment. So we have some public comment. Just a reminder to everyone that the board cannot comment on or discuss public comment. We are here to listen and we welcome Hannah Big John. Hi. I am just making sure I can mute my I think the YouTube video. Um, hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Great. Um, I am making a public comment for two items. Um, item 10E, which was in response to resignations, um, which were zero <laughs> today, so it seems silly, but it, it was still an agenda item. Um, and then also in uh, 15E, which was in response to the facilities planning update. So first, very briefly, very quickly, um, in response to the resignations, I was wondering if the district holds exit interviews or surveys for staff who are leaving um, and resigning. And uh, just that was, that's it. Uh, it might be a good to hear why people leave and if those reasons um, are something the district could remedy if applicable at all. Um, just curious about that. Um, then in response to the facilities planning update, um, a copy of this letter that I'm going to read was sent to Mr. Burkhalter earlier today, uh, signed by the entire staff on the lower level of the high school middle school building. It reads, um, we would like to address a significant concern with the current facility renovation proposal. Did you all know that there is not a staff restroom on the lower level of the high school middle school building? This may not seem at first like a huge problem, but a dozen of your staff members teach from downstairs. Each time we need to use the restroom, we are forced to either use the bathrooms with our students or take a significant hike to the nearest restroom, which is one floor up and a few hallways away. Option one is unacceptable. There must be liability issues with using a restroom alongside the children we teach not to mention the privacy issues in sharing a restroom with students. Option two is inconvenient to the point of ridiculous. On several occasions, we timed this venture to get an accurate idea. It takes a minimum of five minutes to make a quick trip to the bathroom for us basement folks. That's not possible during our brief passing times. There must be a workable solution to this problem in our building revision. A few viable options could be Add a staff restroom to the downstairs teacher workroom. There is ample space down there and plumbing is already in place, at least as a sink. 
Uh, option two could be reconfigure the PE office on the west side of the building and renovate the existing single stall bathroom shower to allow access for staff. We implore you, implore you to find a solution to this issue uh, with the opportunity that is in front of us now. The fact that there's no staff restroom and that there was none put into the building in the first place seems like a major oversight. Now is the time to remedy the situation. Please do not put this off. Signed, the staff on the downstairs of the building. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hannah. Item 14, action. A voucher summary two. These are expenses related to health insurance. I move to approve the vote for summary two in the amount of $260,977.80. Second. Second. All in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain. I abstain. Angie abstains. Thank you, Angie. Moving on, item 15, information discussion. Item A, Mike has preliminary budget information. Um, so I have put together a, a very, very preliminary budget, which um, there, there is a lot of things in flux as, as I'm sure everybody is tired of me saying, because there's always things in flux um, with, the, with the budget. However, this year very much so. Um, to the extent that I, I've probably got more disclaimers on this one. You know, it's just preliminary, please. It's just preliminary because, um, you know, there's, uh, well, I don't think our revenue limits will change very much because of the declining enrollment that I am projecting. Obviously our aid will in, be impacted a lot with how this year finalizes and our spending comes out and which will either increase or decrease the amount of property taxes that I am projecting. Um, we're still working with both the Early Learning Center and the Big League Pool operations to really come up with an understanding of what in this first year of basically operating both of those facilities um, should be levied in Fund 80. And, and there's a lot of work to be done on that as far as coming up with a, an amount that will be sufficient, but yet not excessive and, and, and have to um, put more into that fund than, than we need to. Um, and then just in general, you know, our, our debt service and, you know, that's probably the most predictable. We know where we're at, but we also know that we are looking at future projects and, and how that could um, be impacted. I have started budgeting, um, modest increases for salaries and benefits. Um, you know, I don't think we're to a point yet where we can say this percent or overall this percent. Um, you know, we have some work on our ends is to find efficiencies and savings in other areas because as we said before, um, you know, with, a, with an, out an increase in revenues, um, the expenses when they go up have to be offset. So. Um, we, we're going to continue to that. We talked a little bit about it um, in our in our compensation committee meeting today, and um, we will we will continue with that. So this is just kind of a first blush um, budget. Next month will be a little better, but it's going to go into July and August um, before we really have a good good feeling as to as to where things will end. That's it. All right. Questions for Mike? All right, item B, Mike and Tom, Big Lee Pool update. Um, so I, I had, the, the pool has been fixed. The, the leak in the pool was identified and was dug, fixed, resealed, and, you know, and everything. Um, they filled the pool um, coming out of the, I believe it was the Monday following Easter. I started filling the pool and everything right now looks like it is holding water just perfect. Running the pumps, um, 
uh, our chemical uh, companies will be coming to, you know, we've been able to start treating the water. Um, we are heating the water that is going slow. The water was very cold. Um, and I think if I remember right, we're in the low 70s right now. We want to get it to about 88. Um, talk today with, uh, had a nice meeting today with Bill Soper from the YMCA. We are to the point um, right now where the insurance issue has been remedied and we are moving forward with that. Um, very shortly, we are actually meeting Wednesday to come up with some formal announcements as to, um, I would like to announce that we right now plan on um, sticking with our original open for operations date of the Monday following, or the Tuesday following uh, Memorial Day, and that uh, we should be announcing very soon um, some scheduling as far as for swimming lessons, what our open swim will look like, um, and that they uh, feel even to get us started right now, we have lifeguards in the area that are, are have indicated they're ready to go. They have closed the pool manager position uh, opening and they've had really good interest in that and they feel really good about that. So um, I don't have any announcement as to who that is or, or will be their employee um, as we discussed before. But um, yes, things are definitely moving forward in a positive direction today. Yeah. And with that, with that, and with that, I know he's going to yell at me, but please give Mike a round of applause here. That has been an amazing accomplishment. Um, you have been awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're suggesting that Mike makes an awesome pool boy. <laughs> I have learned more about pools, Robert, than I ever thought I would need. <laughs> and, and, and I will say, um, you know, we uh, have Randy Gabrielson was hired as a, as a part-time custodial slash maintenance person down at the, um, at the Big League Pool. And he has experience running that pool when he was with the hospital. And that has been invaluable so far. Um, not only has he been doing a great job of getting a lot of our rust off the stainless steel and, you know, that's everything after sitting for, for a year and a half, almost two years empty, but, you know, he knows, okay, now is when we got to add the chemicals and then this doesn't look right. We've got to adjust this a little bit. And, and so we're very, very fortunate to, to have, have Randy in that position right now. And it's, the pool looks really nice. It really does. Um, it looks like you could just dive right in. I wouldn't suggest it, but I, it looks like you could do it. So we're going to tour next month? Sure. On your suit? Yep. We'll be up to town. Please tell. We'll see you in. It's two degrees a day is what they figure they can do. If everything's running right. <laughs> Uh, one more for Mike. Donations over two fifty. Yeah, we have two today, and they were um, Mary Reed towards the FFA two hundred and fifty dollars, and then the Congdon Oil Company, which is through our local mobile mobile station, five hundred dollars for their Education Alliance for the Math and Science School Grant Program. Thank you to to Robbie Oldham and, and the crew down at Oldham for applying for that and. And we like to use it for science in the elementary schools. So I think they might already have some ideas. Great. That's much appreciated. And Tom, updates. All right. I'm going to try not to have a, a matching Kim's coughing fit every once in a while here. So I apologize. Um, I think we're good, though. Uh, so I will try to do my best here. Uh, Facilities planning update. Thank you uh, to all who attended the uh, three total public input sessions we had on our facilities um, and giving us the, the invaluable feedback that we that we received. It was a great turnout. I want to say, and I don't have the official numbers right in front of me, but we were around 50 um, to, uh, total people, which is outstanding. So they anticipate a district our size to get 20 to 30 for that event, for the, for the two in-person and the virtual combined. Um, for, so for us to be uh, double, essentially, you know, their, their expected amounts was pretty incredible. Um, thank you to 
uh, both the, the folks from Myron and HSR, but also uh, Mike and Beth and all the admin team for helping um, set everything up. Uh, when we do an event like that, it takes an all hands on deck approach. And uh, I thought that, that the, the conversation and the feedback that we received was just outstanding. So uh, a huge thank you for that. Uh, the next steps in that process are to uh, craft a, a survey, which we have been working on over the past few days, and we'll be going to print very soon, and then we'll be sent out as soon as that is ready uh, to the community. So you're going to get that in a, in a variety of ways, depending on which type of, of uh, resident you are. So all of our parents will be getting that um, uh, via email. There will also be a mailing, but you can do that just virtually, probably the easiest for most. Um, board members will get it virtually as well, as well as all staff will get that virtually. Um, yeah, the, uh, the rest of the community will get that in the mail and they can choose to take that virtually or uh, via, via the pen and, and paper filling that out. And then uh, we have the prepaid envelope for them to send that back. So we're really excited about how the survey turned out based upon the feedback of, of staff, of the board, of the community. Um, and I hope that um, you know, we'll get really, really good uh, results and many, many returned uh, surveys so that the board can make an educated decision uh, on moving forward. Um, any questions about the facilities planning update? All right, uh, early learning center update. Um, so we applied for the partner up grant. Um, we're still waiting to hear um, what, what that uh, result will be. But even um, without that, uh, Sharon has put together an amazing core team of, uh, I don't know, Beth, how many people, 14 or 15? Throughout the, there's a lot um, throughout the community of community leaders that uh, have come together and identified not only issues in the community, um, but also, uh, and a variety of things, resources, funding support, um, as well as all sorts of, of just energy behind this project, which is, in, which is awesome. And uh, so I would give a big shout out to Sharon and to Beth for organizing those meetings and, and uh, for really having it go as successful as, as, we, as, it, as it has gone. That will continue either way, um, as far as what the, um, the grant uh, feedback is that we receive because I we feel that that was best practice to get a group of community leaders together and to uh, not only get a tour of the building and understand some of the thought process, but also that long term, uh, the long term partnerships and relationships that are needed to sustain and, and help uh, grow uh, a program like that. So this team will help with our long term their long range, <clears throat> excuse me, strategic planning and uh, and uh, again, we're off to a, a phenomenal start with that. As far as the building itself, the, we have had two different organizations walk through uh, to give us some quotes and to give us some options, um, uh, what those numbers uh, would come back at as far as the renovations that um, Sharon and, um, and those uh, two groups feel that that, that that building will need it to get it up and, and running. Um, so we're excited about that. Obviously, with construction right now, there are a lot of variables that are hard to uh, pinpoint or identify. Um, so I know that the, the question that we get often is, you know, opening date, we still don't have something, you know, to give you a concrete opening date. Hopefully, we will have a best guess, best guess soon. Um, but we're, again, very excited about that. Uh, we also had a group of uh, 20, I believe was the total number. I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but volunteers that came the Saturday before Easter to help clean out that building and load up the truck to take items to the restore in La Crosse. Um, I can't, I can't begin to, to, um, to talk about how proud I was, um, for that all call to go out to staff, uh, from a new employee, Sharon, um, and to get a response like that from our students and parents of our students uh, was just, it was, it's another, um, uh, just another great example of what this community is capable of. 
Um, and so it was, a, it was a beautiful, uh, beautiful morning. Um, I, I brought my little eight year old in and he helped me move some things, which was pretty cute too. Um, but, uh, it was, it was just an, it was just a great, great morning. Um, lots of donuts and lots of coffee for those parents. Um, and, uh, and again, what a, what a great opportunity, um, to showcase what we do to, to not only give back, um, to our community, but also the greater, greater area with, uh, that partnership with the ReStore. Um, any questions on the early learning center? Well, we got everything out of there now. So it's ready for renovation or do you have yep. some more stuff? We still have some things in there that Sharon wants to keep. And so we will put them in areas that are not being renovated. We'll have to move them around a little bit, but not too much. Um, the exception just being the two office areas. So there'll be a little shuffling when we would have to do flooring, but that's really the only <clears throat> updates that are needed in those rooms. So um, should be minor at this point and, and totally manageable, but there was a lot uh, that, has, that has gone. We also uh, donated to both the uh, Viroqua Housing Authority and the Westby Housing Authority. Um, so again, this, this community approach has been, has been awesome to see. Um, you know, that we're able to, to help uh, other organizations that, that give back directly to our communities is, is pretty outstanding. Any other que <clears throat> questions? <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> questions on that? All right. Uh, volunteer recognition. I, I just want, you know, to take this time and and while we have not had the, the number or uh, number of hours of volunteers that we typically would have prior to COVID, uh, we still have had um, a wide variety of people step up and volunteer in many, many ways. And I just wanna make sure that we are um, acknowledging and thanking all of those that volunteer for our districts and sometimes each and every day. Um, and, and it's just, uh, again, um, I'm very proud to be a part of a district um, that has all of these people that come that come on uh, and, and help in whatever way they can that day. Um, and so we do look forward to increasing that pool uh, moving forward as we have more visitors of that back in the buildings, as we have guests back in the buildings. Um, and so if you um, are interested in, in volunteering or even um, doing anything like that, uh, please, uh, we do have to fill out, um, uh, Beth, what is it? What is it called? There's a Volunteer background check. A or... back volunteer background check because we still, you know, we definitely want our buildings to be safe. But, but uh, those uh, there are many that that filled it out pre-COVID and their three-year renewal is up. So we do have quite a few renewals that need to happen. Um, but again, pl please give a big shout out and a big thank you to all of those that volunteer um, in any capacity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and my last uh, bullet point, we have an exciting new scholarship to, to update everybody on. So this one comes uh, from the John and Grace Dyson um, Foundation and in coordination and partnership with the Viroqua Area Foundation. So I want to give a big shout, a shout out and thank you to the Dyson family. Um, so right now, this first year, so they're going to do $15,000 a year. And this first year will be $10,000 for a student attending a four-year university. Um, and $5,000 to a student attending a two-year or tech program. And so uh, what a great, um, what, what a great gift um, to be able to give our students. So thank you uh, to, again, the John and Grace Dyson family and the Viroqua Area Foundation for all you do for our students. That is an amazing, an amazing scholarship. Thank you. Any questions on any of my, oh, Angie, you got something? I just wanna add that um, the three children of the Dyson family have been uh, absolutely mar marvelous to work with. And it's Jack and Bill and Lisa. And um, I know that one of them might be attending the awards program this year. And uh, the 10 and $15,000 or 15,000 total will be an annual contribution. Um, the rest of the uh, the rest of their gift is uh, fifty thousand to the Viroqua Cemetery for some construction there and some tree removals and additions, and then a hundred thousand dollars to the city of Viroqua for um, park the parks. 
some parks programs, um, rebuilding parks, things like that. So uh, those things are in the works as well. Thank you. Uh, any other questions about any of my report? All right, thank you. Thanks, Tom. Administrator reports, co-curricular update, Jason. So co-curriculars this spring have gotten off to a slow start. <laughs> um, scheduling, although it did allow me to have one more student drop here because um, she did not manage baseball today when, they, when baseball is called off. So um, otherwise, it's just been interesting and hasn't been exactly horrible this way or the other. But um, some of the times, like we had a couple of track events that were 40 degrees and 40 mile per hour winds. Um, had two scheduled indoor track events and we could only even make it to one of the indoor meets. Um, so it was like last Thursday was the first track outdoor meet we were able to attend. Um, so uh, yeah, Joe is um, was doing a great job um, trying to coordinate things and move things around and give kids opportunities. And, and we know as we get towards the end of May that it's um, gonna be a lot of events. Um, so even we've talked about how we need to make sure that we're talking to the coaches to make sure the kids are keeping their grades up because they're a lot of kids are going to be really busy um, with how <coughs> things have kind of gotten pushed back and moved around. So um, numbers are good. Um, one of the things we saw um, during kind of the COVID year was we had a decrease, especially in track, um, and those numbers are back up. And so um, it's good to see uh, those numbers up. So. Um, so numbers are very solid in a lot of the sports and the kids are out and can get some nice weather to uh, get them out a little bit more. It'd be great. So we get no snowboarding with the spring sport? No, nope, not, not so scary. So. Thanks, Jason. John, concurrent Very similar. <clears throat> Middle school track is uh, off to a slow start and the bets are open for tomorrow night, whether we have our home meet or not. 40 degree weather and 15 mile an hour wind, wind chill of 20, 25. So, so we'll see. Um, Softball and tennis played tonight. They, uh, they <laughs> they're tougher. They <laughs> 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 like the icicles. So, no, it was actually snowing today during recess. So, <laughs> it was good. It's good. Keep us on our toes. But, no, just like Jason said, numbers are coming back, rebounding. When we were in the middle of COVID, well, I think we were confident things would be built and come back, and they are. So that's a great sign. So, yeah, no, students are excited. We have 61 students out uh, for track. And I'm not sure if this is a high number or a record number or not, but we have almost 20 students from Pleasant Ridge coming over mm -hmm. for track, which is, which is it's a fantastic mm -hmm. relationship, I think. So, so that's a great thing. So. Um, hopefully, a relationship with them when they see what we're about more and, and they come over, you know, for high school. So that's a wonderful connection for them. So that's so good. Any questions about co curriculars? All right. And it looks like it's Severe Weather Awareness Week. Jason, John, and Pat. Jason has nothing to share with us because Jason would have been in New York and D.C. during the vast majority of severe weather layers. So John I'll, took over at our building. I'll just say a few words. You know, it's still being very cautious uh, with, with safety and health. Uh, and we're unmasked now. Uh, we had a talk-through drill, just like last year, instead of an actual walk-through, having the students, 350, congregate in the wrestling room with locker rooms and the other 350 or so, 300 in the locker room for 15, 20 minutes. Just, uh, we just didn't want to do that. Uh, not right now, even though cases are minimal, we just didn't want to do it. So on April 7th at 145 in coordination and conjunction with our statewide drill, um, we did a building-wide talk to drill. So I read an announcement about a warning uh, of how we respond um, and a watch um, and how we all clear, et cetera. And then ask teachers to talk through it with their students, show the students the egress maps on, like they're right over there for this room. Um, and then with fifth graders being new, well, they've been in the building long enough now to know 
where the rest of the room is and the locker rooms are. Um, but still, I ask teachers to go on a little tour just, mm -hmm. just to make sure, just so they connect it with the tornado drill and that dodgeball and recess. For <laughs> by it, so. And at the elementary building, we also participated in the April 7th statewide tornado drill. Um, we, our goal was just to make sure students and staff knew where to go. Um, so when I gave the, the alert to, to take shelter, know where to go, listen to the adults and get there quickly and quietly. We didn't simulate like we have in previous years where we turn the lights off to simulate losing power and things like that. We just, and, and I was really impressed by the time I made the announcement and actually got to the hallway to, to see everybody was there and were, were like silent, which is, doesn't always happen in a school building <laughs> in the hallways. Um, so it was really impressive that everybody accomplished our goals, which was to get nowhere, just nowhere to go. We didn't keep them there long, and then it was all clear and back to back to business. But it's good to good to walk through those and talk through those situations so we would be prepared in, a, in the case of a real event. Great questions, anyone? Let's not have a tornado. <laughs> Sounds good to me. We have Riley online for a summer school update. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, yes. thank you, Riley. All right. Um, yes, the, now I can. Okay. <laughs> um, the summer school enrollment period ended on March 25th, so a month ago. Our numbers have increased by about 18% uh, from last year, just elementary middle school. We're up to around uh, just over 370 elementary middle school students. Uh, next week, I'll meet with Mrs. Schneider to work on the high school students that need credit recovery in math, social studies, and English. Um, a couple of the classes that um, have helped with the increase in numbers, and I mentioned them last month, Outdoor Adventures, and the sports performance camp. Um, I just wanted to mention something real briefly about outdoor adventures. <clears throat> Kim Cade and Marie Schneider have been working on obtaining funding for binoculars and field guides for their class. Um, their goal is for each of the 36 students in the class to have a pair of binoculars to use. Kim and Marie are waiting to hear about two $500 grants and other local donations. They have gotten word from Roger Hansen that they will be receiving $400 from the Cooley Region Audubon Society and are very, very appreciative of that. Um, so I just wanted to, to mention that. Um, uh, something that I've been doing over the last few weeks is going through all the enrollment numbers to uh, figure out which classes are overflowing and how we can move kids around. Um, and next week, I will be solidifying where the classrooms will be and things of that nature. Are there any questions at the moment? I don't think so. Um, that's pretty much pretty much all I had. Sounds great. A lot of students. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's exciting. How many FDEs is that now, Mike? Um, it's going to be in the mid-30s, mid I'm sh I mean, without looking at how long they are, but Riley and I were going through them today looking at the staffing, and he's got a lot of kids in the afternoon, too. I mean, it's not just morning session. I mean, it's it, it could really add up. <laughs> and, and I know he, he glossed over that a little bit, but 18% increase in any year is good. Um, but we're, we're also, you know, we, we were a little hesitant moving buildings, you know, we're at the middle school, high school for next year, but, um, this is, this is, um, this is a really good sign. And I thank Riley and Brenda for all their work and, uh, in planning this. So thank you too. Moving to item F board report, WASB legislative update. Does anyone have any updates? I know I do not. Kind of quiet in Madison, I think this campaign season must be upon us. 
And Kim, is there a VAMS update at all? Yeah, I can give that. Hopefully I'll be able to give the whole thing. Um, the VAMS committee met last uh, Thursday and they're really working on developing strategic goals and trying to get their committees working um, and up and running, which will be a good thing so that they um, have some better processes. Um, they, one of the people from the committee attended the um, tour with the board of the elementary and they indicated that they felt that um, HSR, et cetera, had a very clear understanding of the needs of Montessori. So they thought that went well. Um, they indicated some concerns about the seventh and eighth grade class and possibly needing another teacher. And Pat explained the process um, for that. And um, they're going to have to work on memberships. They had one person who's I'm not sure if they're moving or just starting a new job and they aren't able to continue with it. So they are still working on that and um, hopefully they can get to the next level of governance. And they talked about the fact that we need to, which we knew this next year, we need to update the, um, the contract and all the pieces uh, related to that. So that's about it. Right. Any questions for Kim? Right. We've reached the end of our agenda. I just want to thank everyone for your time tonight, for your support of the district, um, and your care and concern for our students. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Vote by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, everybody. Sorry I wasn't Thanks, everyone there. online. Hope you feel better. Yeah. Yeah. Feel better, Kim. Yeah.